Hi, this is Roger Conrad, and welcome to another issue of Questions and Answers, live from Alexandria, Virginia, where we have weather only a utility could love. So our first question today comes to us from Randy from Texas, and Randy asks that since Master Limited Partnerships have gone down so much, and he's read an article that alleges that the business model's broken, shouldn't he just go ahead and sell all his Master Limited Partnerships that have anything to do with energy? Uh, Randy, I think what you have to realize is that this space is not, everything's not all the same. Uh, some of the companies that you're going to see out there that have been sold off pretty hard deserve it, and they should be sold. Other companies, uh, other MLPs are still very, very strong. Now, during the last lower for longer price environment for energy, which we believe will be happening over the next several years, uh, the higher quality companies with good balance sheets that didn't have a lot of refinancing needs, that had good assets, uh, these companies did extremely well over that period, not only as businesses, but also uh, at, uh, for, um, for the point of view of investors. So um, this is a group that we want to own. We think it's going to outperform. On the other hand, there are a lot of companies, again, that should be sold. And separating these companies, the good from the bad, uh, is the point of our safety rating system that we discuss in detail in the January issue of Conrad's Utility Investor. Okay, so question one is actually a pretty nice segue into question two. Uh, Jerry from California writes, uh, and first he thanks us for our uh, work on our safety rating system in Conrad's Utility Investor. But he writes that uh, the highest rating companies, he's, he's worried that the highest rated companies, which are rated A and B, uh, what would they do in a bear market for stocks? Well, Jerry, we do think that the overall stock market is due for a bear market. But on the other hand, if you look at the utilities, how they've performed, uh, they pretty much already had a slump. Uh, and that's primarily because everybody was worried last year about the Federal Reserve, what it would do with interest rates. So what we found in previous cycles is actually utilities do perform pretty well once the Fed starts raising rates. Um, the other thing utilities have in their favor uh, right now that not a lot of people are aware of is there's tremendous potential for earnings growth and not only in investing in power grids, but also investing in uh, solar energy, investing in natural gas. Uh, so earnings and dividends are actually ramping up for a lot of these companies at the same time that they're declining for many companies uh, in, in the United States. And again, at the same time, utilities trade at fairly reasonable valuation. So bottom line is we're very comfortable holding our A and B rated utilities uh, in a bear market, which again, becomes more and more likely um, with each passing month for the broad market. You're going to want to own our A and B rated utilities. Okay, question three comes to us from Bonnie, writing from New York. And Bonnie asks, what to do with a stock that cuts its dividend? Should she buy more? Because the price has obviously fallen. Uh, should she sell? Or should she just hold on? And Bonnie, the, the answer to that question, again, is it's, it's very nuanced. Some of the times uh, when a company, and there are plenty of examples, uh, when a company has cut its dividend, that money saved has actually enabled them to solve their larger problems. So it's, uh, when the dividend's cut, when the stock price falls, it tends to be a nadir for that company. And in many cases, it's a great opportunity to buy, and you realize some pretty strong returns uh, thereafter. In the utility space, what comes to mind for me is Three Mile Island, uh, the company that owned the Three Mile Island nuclear plant, General Public Utilities, back in the 70s. Uh, it went below a dollar at one point uh, following that, um, that accident. And, but within the next 10 years, it had risen 30 to 1. So very good time to buy that one, obviously, uh, a low point in that company that was a good buying opportunity. On the other hand, there are plenty of examples where companies that cut their dividends once are going to do so again. We've seen that with particularly the energy producer Master Limited Partnerships, which we've had uh, pretty much all out sells for well over a year now. Um, so again, it's very nuanced, and that's the point. Uh, of our safety rating system to sort out the good and the bad uh, from the ugly. So thanks for that question. Okay, so question four comes to us from Wayne from Georgia. And Wayne asks, where is the bottom going to be for oil prices? And in particular, where is the bottom going to be for stocks that we've set dream buy prices on? Which perhaps in many cases have fallen below uh, those levels that we set. Well, Wayne, our guess is that uh, Oil prices are going to wind up bottoming somewhere in the $20 to $25 per barrel range, and they're going to stay 
uh, in the $40 to $60 barrel range thereafter for the next several years. So the real question is what companies are going to do well in that lower for longer pricing environment. And the dream buys that we've set on certain companies are, are meant to uh, give you a good entry point for companies, or really give you an extreme low valuation entry point for these companies that are going to do well in the lower for longer environment that we that we forecast. So that's really the way you have to look at it. If they do go below those dream prices, um, you know, and, and some of these may, again, 20 to $25 a barrel is below where prices are right now. So uh, it's possible that these things will sell off some more. But if you do get in at those prices, um, we think you're going to be very happy two to three years down the road. And again, that's the important thing, not so much where oil prices uh, wind up bottoming or where these stocks, if these stocks lose uh, a few more points. So thanks for that question. Our last question today comes to us from Mary, writing from Boston. And Mary writes that she holds a stock in her IRA that rates F under our uh, quality grading system. Uh, she's had it for a while. We've recommended it for a, a sell for a while, uh, and it's dropped. It's lost a lot of value. It's in an IRA, so she can't get a tax benefit from selling it, and she wonders if she should just go ahead and stick with it um, going forward, just because it's it is so cheap and won't it just recover? Well, Mary, any company rated F under our quality grading system uh, should be sold. Uh, the bottom line is, and if you're talking about an energy company. Uh, that it's not going to do well under a lower for longer pricing environment and even though it may have lost a lot of ground to date it's very likely going to lose a lot more ground going forward. Any company outside the energy space that rates F uh, has similar weaknesses. Uh, things that, with its underlying business, uh, weaknesses with its balance sheet uh, that are going to undermine its stock price and if it's already started coming down um, it's very likely going to lose a lot more value. So again the thing to do is to sell, uh, take your loss, even though you don't get a tax benefit, you're better off with that cash in something else. So thanks for that question. So that's it for today. I want to thank everyone who submitted their questions and invite others to do so. Again, check us out at conradsutilityinvestor.com and have a great day.